as we dig deeper into this topic, we have Małgorzata Wepich joining us. Małgorzata is Central Mental Health Center, Mental Health Helpline CEO. It's wonderful, wonderful to have you join us, Małgorzata. Hello. Hello, I'm very pleased uh, to be here and I'm very honored to be among such uh, distinguished guests. You know, my, my self-esteem is rising to be with this bunch of people here. So thank We're you for inviting me. have you. Absolutely. And the topic that we want to address here now is super important because just like a DEI strategy is easy to mess up, so also a mental health strategy. So let's, let's start with maybe uh, one of the fundamental questions. Do you have to have mental health as part of your uh, DEI strategy or is it enough if you have networks? So I think that we have to look at the big goals that companies have. And when we are trying to look at the benefits of implementing mental health strategies, the very first thing that I'm mentioning is that only minority of our physical in, uh, illnesses comes from genetic issues or it's really caused by viruses of, or bacteria. Majority of prolonged illnesses and struggles with physical health, they are based on, pro on prolonged stress. So what we see in data that those companies who are focusing on mental health issues on everyday basis, in fact, so they do have strategic approach to well-being and mental health, they, they achieve the point that the number of sick leave days drops even 50%. So when people start to really self-care about the stress level, they cope with anxiety, they became more emotionally stable, they are basically more healthy. So this is one big, you know, a big point to mention here. And uh, another thing I wanted to mention, why we should include mental health in DNI or do it separately, it's, it's up to you, but basically it's very uh, interconnected. Uh, uh, I'm social psychologist, so I wanted to mention that like 30 years ago, there was a research uh, about attitudes and how they are related. And for example, attitudes against LGBT are related with attitudes toward having a gun. Yeah, so that, that was discovered in states that those people who are really not very tolerant, uh, uh, they also wanted to have a gun. So they decided to change one attitude and never talk about the other one. Yeah, so they wanted to change the attitude towards a guns possession. And what happened that people became more tolerant toward LGBT. So when we look at what we want to achieve in company, that we want to create a safety place for, for everyone. When people are tolerant, open, they speak up, they know how to give feedback, they know how to take feedback, they, they feel authenticity, trust, belonging. So whether we talk about mental health and we lower this taboo, we, we, we raise awareness, people are more open and tolerant toward people who are mentally struggling, we will also create more tolerance toward other goals that we want to achieve, yes, so just to create more open, uh, uh, open-minded um, culture. So I think that when we look at those goals and when you, we use only networks, because what I see in, in companies that some, sometimes the subject of mental health is touched once during the year. So we have one mental health day or a, a mental health Mount week Shata. or mental health month. Yes, and it's not enough. Yeah, And especially when we give it to networks, sometimes it's just a benefit for people who are, you know, going down in, in motivation and, uh, and they say, okay, I wanted to take care about this subject because I'm, I feel like I'm burning up out so now i have a new goal i can do something with mental health in my company but it's not on strategic level so i think it's it's crucial to know that we need to implement mental health strategies into a more broader perspective uh, thank you for that Mogajata. there are really quite a number of questions we want to ask you because this is really such an important topic we started with networks i suppose the whole of the mental health conversation is essentially about having enough trust and credibility for employees to to come to you with uh, issues and challenges that are so delicate in nature by definition so i suppose that really answers our very first questions networks will not be enough yes they help 
yes, they are good to have, but with maybe even the majority of challenges you will be facing, they are not even a reference point for many. Uh, so the second question I have for you, because, well, your official denotation is Mental Health Centre CEO. So I would imagine with your access to lots of company data and case studies, which obviously you cannot share with us, but, but I want to ask you about the trend uh, in the past three years. Are we talking about a marginal growth of mental health challenges, both in terms of quality and diversity of those challenges? Are we talking 5% over the past three years, or are we talking about a multiplier effect? Can you share any of the trend background? Okay, so uh, talking about data, before pandemic, we could uh, approximately say that 20% of population could face really huge problems with mental health issues like depression, like uh, anxiety, like personality disorders, so, um, so and other types of illnesses or disorders. And approximately about uh, 30, 40 percent of people were, were struggling with, with prolonged stress time to time. But now what we see that this number of people who are struggling with anxiety, PTSD, depression, so severe problems, it rise 30 percent. So we may say that it's up to 30 percent of people who may have some kind of symptoms that really require professional support. And when it comes to stress, this data that shows that 70% uh, of people are uh, emotionally disengaged or emotionally struggling. So there, there is kind of emotional exhaustion that comes from prolonged stress. And it's not only caused by, uh, by pandemic. Pandemic is not uh, the only trigger, but we also have this geopolitical situation with war in Ukraine and with economical crisis. And so the impact is, is not dropping. It's, it's, real, it's even enhanced nowadays. But so, yes, I understand, uh, Malgajat, I understand you're talking about the society at large. Uh, but my question was more towards the corporate or client uh, sector in the sense that, okay. is it fair to say that in the pre-pandemic era, Margot and her team was running around companies asking, do you need any mental health services? And after the pandemic, it might be the other way around. Sorry, I can't take any more. There's just too much of it. Are we dealing with this kind of situation? Yes, we deal with this kind of situation. So, so yes, before, because we, we do our business for almost six years now. So it, we started before pandemic. We didn't have to, uh, you know, really convince companies because when we started our business and we, it was really a, a kind of a, a good time to start it. So, so those companies who choose to, to, you know, start mental health strategies, they really, they were open. So we didn't struggle with selling our products. But when pandemic started, it, it's, it's, it's getting mad, I would say. Yeah? So really the companies realized that we have to do it. And then when we have this worst situation since uh, February, it's getting even more intense. Yeah? So we have more and more uh, questions about it. But you know what, what happens? It's when we talk about mental health with our clients, we don't mention a pandemic or war anymore. There, people became more uh, self-aware. So uh, employees require this kind of support. They came to HR, they, they came to managers. People really speak up more about having depression or having problems with kids with depression. So really it's just the, um, this process starts from the bottom that they really realize that we do have a need to, to know how to solve the problems, to know how to manage the employee in crisis, how to react in critical situations. And it's actually super important that you say that because between the lines we can conclude that there is much more confidence even in difficult circumstances to approach the company so that employees themselves don't think that it's they're a problem alone but the company is there to support them in the process which leads me to to the next question um, how do you do it how do you offer mental health support in a structural sense organizational sense so that it it's not intervention basis but rather solving a structural problem like for instance 
can managers help you out? And if yes, how should they be trained to do that? Can they be trained internally? Should they be trained professionally? And to what extent should their support be possible? What are the limitations? Okay, so first thing that I have to mention is that well-being and uh, being in good health, in good condition, it's the uh, it's uh, it's responsibility of everyone. So on the on the basic level, I'm responsible for my mental health, and you are responsible for your mental health. And this is the first line of support. I need to recognize my problems. I need to recognize that my body is changing, that I feel tension. So who is responsible for mental health? Everyone is responsible for his mental health. And then when we think about uh, psychological support or social support, first, at first hand, we should ask our family, friends, intimate par partners to support us. So company, it's not the first choice of, uh, that, okay, I will tell my, my manager that I'm, I'm having depression. Yeah? So healthy relations in our everyday life are also our responsibility. So I care about myself. I care about my relationships. So if I have a problem, I, I talk to my family and friends. And then we have this level when I really see that my mental health impacts my duties. So I need to talk to my manager because I see that, you know, I cannot handle anymore. Yeah? I need some lowered expectations and etc. And on the other hand, most of us were raised in families when our basic need, needs were neglected. Yeah, and, and, and there is a pressure from society. We have external expectations and our parents weren't really prepared to react to our you know, emotions and needs. Really, many people are, self, are, are neglected. So to change, the, to, to change anything, to change awareness, so people recognize that they feel anxiety, how to cope with it, and etc. we need to address everyone. And then there's a level of managers and teams. So peer support, uh, helping people to know how to recognize that the colleague is in crisis and how to approach the, the, the colleague in crisis, how to give very supportive conversation to someone that is at the other level. And the next level is to prepare managers to manage the situation when I do have problems uh, in, my, in my team. Yeah, I do have people with depression. I do have people who have prolonged illnesses or family issues, how I should manage this situation and not only you know, take care for one employee, but also to take care of, uh, for, for all the team. And how to, how to train people. Basically, you know, what I see that because it's very, um, you know, hot subject and many companies discover that, yeah, yeah, we can sell this product. So I, I really do see that, that people who are not an expert, they started to do trainings. So what I wanted to say that in my experience, when we cope with difficult situations of our cl clients, Sometimes even we, we are experts, we commit mistakes and we've learned a lot during the last five years. And I really see some kind of, you know, um, danger when I see that people who are um, just business trainers, they want to start doing lectures about mental health or stress related subjects or how to support people in grief, how to manage the team because they have really business mindset. Yeah, so KPIs, how to, uh, you know, fix the employee quickly so he returns back to work and it's very efficient again. Yeah, so, so that's the first problem I see that, that when you are a psychologist, you have, we have our ethics code and we have to be always on on the side of employee remembering that it's it's business yeah so uh so this is the first mistake that we can commit that that we will be too much on the side of the business i let me finish and Thank on you. the other hand uh, what I wanted to mention is that that sometimes we uh, we need to really remember about business uh, goals. So when I see psychotherapists or psychologists who are really very emphatic and they want to just protect the employee, they cannot be on the same page with managers. Yeah. So really, I would recommend looking for people for for experts who understand both both sides. Yeah, the, the business goals and what the employee needs and how to support him. 
Exactly, then. That's a super important closing remark I was, ask, I was going to ask you about that. We've got a number of very interesting questions reaching us, but first let me ask you, um, as someone who is professionally exposed to so much of human suffering, it's fair to say, I suppose, what's your own personal strategy for well-being and mental health? Because, well, I would imagine uh, elephants and lions are part of the strategy, aren't they? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, yeah, we know each other, so so we know that this is my hobby, and uh, yeah, I really crave to to be in Africa again. In fact, I, I'm going to Kenya in one month. But on everyday basis, what helps us is first to remember that I'm professional, I'm psychologist, I'm I'm listening people to help them, so I'm not getting very emotionally engaged because I'm not the owner of the problem. I'm, I'm, I'm a good listener, I, I'm trying to look for solutions, but I'm not using emotional empathy, you know, I, I try to understand people, so I use cognitive empathy, so this is the first thing that helps me. Second, it's peer support, so I do use colleagues' supervision, if something is going wrong, I have, I have my, my team to, to support me. And this is what I also recommend to, to people that I train, to managers, to not stay alone with the problem, go and ask someone, HR business partner or more experienced colleagues or core call professionals, whether you have employer assistance program, you can find someone who, who will advise you here, or maybe you can reach mental health center, we will also support you. And then uh, we have also our tools on everyday basis, we need to detach from the role. So after finishing your job, you need to really clear your mind and do something completely different. What I do, I read about elephants communication that helps me or I do some sports, yeah, I listen to the music, I, I gossip with my kids. Yeah, so really the, the private time when I have my head emptied from all those thoughts, it's something that helps me. And I also do recommend people to, to really train their, their brains to detach from the role. Uh, so this is what helps on everyday basis. Thank you for that uh, rather personal also perspective. And I certainly hope at some point it will, uh, it, you will find some time to maybe write a blog or two from time to time, a blog post around the subject from your perspective, from your practical lessons as a practitioner. We've got three questions uh, to address and only 25 seconds left. Uh, and at the end of it, I would like you to at least share with us a, a few sentences only about the the Mental Health Helpline project. But first, the questions. Ariadna and Victoria, can you share more of such research about attitudes towards DNI? Any tips on how to plan a good mental health strategy in a company that isn't yet doing much in the area? And how do we check if the existing strategy works? So these three questions and Mental Health Helpline, one minute. Okay, so when it comes to DNI, I have to say I'm not an expert in DNI generally. Yeah, I'm an expert in mental health. So maybe I will ask uh, uh, answer the second part of the question. When you really want to start from very beginning, and you can uh, expect that there will be some kind of resistance, it's good to start from eye-opening lecture. Uh, uh, about mental health, because what I see in my very, as you can hear, long experience, when we talk about numbers, people are shocked. So this is what we do at the beginning. And also those subjects that people really can identify themselves with. So uh, we talk about stress, how it impacts brain and, and body. We talk about procrastination, perfectionism. We talk about good sleeping habits. And in every subject, we include more tough mental issues. Like we talk about procrastination and perfectionism. So it's about anxiety disorders. When it, we, we talk about sleeping habits, it will be touched uh, this, the uh, it will also cover mental health issues. So we propose kind of light subjects, but uh, underneath we, we hide really good um, you know, points about mental health. So uh, as a first steps, when you want to implement mental health uh, projects, then we need to open managers to this subject. So when we do this lecture for only for managers, we use more numbers. Yes. Yeah? So to convince them that it, it, it will have good return of investment, that's how it can fit to the strategy. And we also convince them really that they know how to recognize the problems, but they, they, they don't know how to approach it. So they have this craving for more knowledge. 
and we do also recommend to have pro to have longer strategies but because what we see those results like the lower number of people uh, who go on the sick leave uh, the lower attrition rates and more people talking about the, their their problems it can happen when you do at least two years of of you know strategy yeah? not just one mental health week but uh, we need to look at those data from broader perspective. Thank you, Margotata. Um, and in bullet points, please, three bullet points around mental health helpline in conclusion. Okay, so what we see, because we have also mental health helpline, as you mentioned at the beginning. So the very first thing is that the most of our consultations are about uh, everyday stress and prolonged stress, family issues, uh, overload, burnout, so what I've mentioned about how this pandemic and uh, and war and economical crisis impacts our um, health and it, it leads to chronic stress. Majority of people are, are coping with this uh, or, or not coping. And from people who who who, who can who are using our mental health helpline. 20 up to 30 percent of people they stay in longer contact in in psychotherapy so it's not only consultations how to cope with everyday stress but also people really need longer help and what what is crucial what i can say from my perspective is that um, first we we support people very quickly yeah so in uh, in at least 24 hours or 48 hours, you can reach to professional psychotherapists, which is really a good offer. But on, on the other hand, when I talk with managers and they recognize that their employees, they do have problems, they need uh, you know quick support, quick, quick access to psychotherapy, and they know that within 24 hours, my employee will have professional support, they also feel uh, supported. So this support is for man managers as well, and they feel that they have control and they feel that I can set a boundary. So I'm not responsible for the mental health of my employee because the goal of support is to be sure that my employee has this issue addressed by professionals. So what I also see many, many, in many situations that when managers know, okay, we have this helpline, so my responsibility is to offer this benefit and then I can feel calm because my employee is under you know, professional support. It's also setting healthy boundaries in, in the company. Thank you so very much, Małgorzata Wypicha. We know that the project Mental Health Helpline has grown tremendously in terms of the number of professional psychotherapists who, who are working in the project, which also is a, is a sign of how big the demand is. And that should be a bit scary in a way, shouldn't it? Yet hopeful because Yet there is hopeful help. because there is more professional approach on the yes. part of employers. Malgojata Vipich, Mental Health Center CEO. Malgosia, thank you so so much for joining the conference. Thank you for being with us. Thank you very much.